Wonderfully awestruck to be able to be here with you this morning and uh, celebrate Lillian's life with you. I think somehow I've only been in the in the parish here now for in Cobar for three weeks, um, but of course I was here for three years, ten years ago. So I got to know Lillian very well as a friend. So I am delighted that the Lord has somehow plucked me to be back here today with you, and uh, He's given me this this joy, this delight, and this privilege. To celebrate here with you this morning. So I'd like to welcome Lillian's family, Susan, Susan Graham, and Deidre, Deidre Bidwell, Alan, Alan Pally, Brady, and their families, Lillian's children, grandchildren. And also I'd like to welcome Mr. Christopher Sullivan, uh, Deputy Official Secretary to the Governor of New South Wales, representing the Governor of New South Wales. And the Honourable John Barillaro, MP, Deputy Premier, Minister for Regional New South Wales, Industry and Trade, representing the Premier of New South Wales. And the Honourable Mark Coulton, MP, Minister for Regional Health, Regional Communications and Local Government, representing the Prime Minister of Australia and also members of federal, state and local governments. As we gather to pray and give honour to this wonderful and extraordinary lady, Lillian Brady, Mayor now for nearly 23 years of Cobar, um, we are first going to honour her and by a sprinkling of holy water, which is a reminder of her baptism, in which she became a child of God and received this gift this gift of eternal life, that she now lives fully, wonderfully, in the presence and the light of God. Something that's hidden from our eyes, but she's now in the presence of God. She's not to fundraise anymore. She's not to build nursing homes anymore. She's to just to receive the gift of her eternal reward. So I do ask the Lord's blessing upon dear Lillian's body. In the waters of baptism, Lillian died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. And I might mention that on Lillian's casket is the symbols of her service to Cobar. Um, there's her medals, including the Order of Australia medal. There's her mayoral chain. And also Hannah Brady is now her granddaughter, is now going to place her hat, which she proudly wore at the races. So my brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our sister Lillian, that she may share in Christ's victory, and let us pray for ourselves, that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. So let us pray. 
O God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant Lillian, whom you have called out of this world, and because she put her hope and trust in you, command she be carried safely home to heaven to come to enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you to be seated now, and could I invite um, Suzanne and Deidre and Pally to come to the microphone, just to share their love for their mother. During the last week, we have heard phrases such as unmitigated force of nature, fierce advocate, sorry, fierce advocate, tough fighter. All very well deserved, but to us, she wasn't just Mayor Brady. She was our mum and our nana. A far more important role to her. Mum was born in Lake Angelico in 1930, weighing just over two pounds. It was quite, a, quite rare for a small baby to survive back then, especially in a small rural setting. She was a fighter right from the start. Sadly, Mum's mother passed away when she was young and she was raised by her grandmother and two formidable aunts, Auntie Mert and Auntie Alice. And I think Mum's cheekiness came from them. On finishing school, she left Lake Jellico and went to Sydney where she worked in finance, administration and retailing. One night at Wentworth Park Dogs, she met a dashing and debonair young doctor called Alan, and life began with him, and what a life it was. They lived in Balmain and Strathfield, and then in 1969, Dad came to Cobar to do a locum. He rang Mum and suggested he'd like, her, uh, he'd like to join a medical practice here in Cobar. Mum said, don't be stupid. Don't bother about packing, just come straight back to Sydney. She finally agreed to one year and stayed for 51. She fell in love with Cobar and more importantly, its, its people. Mum wasn't the usual doctor's wife. She ran 145,000 acres sheep property. She mustered, drenched, rode a motorbike and was covered in red dirt. She was so proud when in one year they produced 500 bales from 20,000 sheep. Mum was just as comfortable sitting having smoko with the shearers as she was sitting in the Premier's office. Some of you may remember Mum's red sports car, then followed by the brute of a 6.9 litre Mercedes. Mum drove fast very, very fast. She was also just as comfortable in the bright green lime Chevy truck, towing a caravan and driving around the show circuit um, for Pally and, and mine horse riding. We, we slept in caravans, trucks, tents and stables. The next week, she'd be down in Sydney staying at the Five Star Menzies Hotel. Nothing phased Mum. I realised Mum was pretty special when my horse went missing on the property and was found a few weeks later dead on the side of a track. I guess you can imagine what a horse looks like after two weeks in the sun and the crows and the pigs, etc. Mum picked every individual piece of him up and buried him for me. Now, I loved that horse very, very much, but there's no way I would have touched any part of him. She currently, Mum used to love all horses, but especially race horses. She currently owns seven horses across two states. She would glam up with the big hat and loved going to the races to have more 
than a small flutter. She was well known for her collection of hats and shoes. Mum was gregarious and everything she did was at warp speed. I accompanied Mum one morning to our minister's office when she was trying to raise funds to build the um, Kidman Way. His office door opened and she started from the waiting room where we were seated using expletives that are not appropriate to use here. By the time she got into his office, he was looking a very pale colour. He was dropping down in his chair and he said, 27 million, you got it, lady. Um, she certainly was very small in stature, but big on spirit. And the infamous statement where a minister dared say to her, oh, you know, nice dress, Lillian. And she said, I'm here for finance, not romance. She certainly was the queen of the one-liners. For those who know us, mum was a different type of mum. She wasn't really the carey sherry type of mum where you want to talk about a broken relationship or a dispute with a friend, because that would elicit the response, get on with it, get over it. The, the phrase was definitely coined on us. But she did teach us to be resilient, independent, and gave us the value of a strong work ethic. And we've all been very successful in our respective careers, and for that I know she was very proud. We owe so much of who we are today to mum being our mother. Mum loved her grandchildren. She enjoyed nothing better than a drinking afternoon, starting at the opera bar and working her way around the rocks. Her house was filled with their photos and she loved them dearly and was proud of their achievements. In different ways, they all have a part of Nan inside of them. In the short time we have here, there is no way to encapsulate mum's life she did so much for so many. Her mind remained sharp to the end, but her little body just got too tired. She mustered enormous strength to watch back roads featuring Cobar and then fell into a deep sleep. She planned it perfectly. We would like to thank the many people who helped mum and supported her throughout the years, especially Linda Carter, Trish Burke, Dr Indra, Peter Abbott, Peter Vlatko, and the staff of Cobar Shire. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you to the staff of the Department of Premier and Cabinet for their hard work in organising today's state funeral. Mum loved an event and she would be very happy with her send off. In her final days, Mum asked me to thank the nursing staff at Cobar Hospital they are amazing. They do so many tasks not in their job description, not having the support that you would have in larger regional hospitals. Yet, at all times, they show care and compassion. Thank you for everything you did for Mum and continue to do for the people of Cobar. And for someone who wants to criticise the nurses at Cobar, Beware the wrath of Lillian. Finally, thank you to the people of Cobar. Mum loved you, worked hard for you, and loved every moment of doing it. We will miss Mum greatly. She lives in our hearts, and we have so many wonderful memories and good lessons for life. She's back with Dad, and I'm sure causing a havoc already, and believe me, her presence will be felt. Mum made a difference wherever she went. Her legacy will live on in Cobar and in our lives. Rest in peace, Mum. You sure do deserve it. Oh. Friend told me I can take as many minutes as I want. So thanks, Pete. Where are you? I did have a shorter version, but Peter said, nah, give Co the big version, Pally. 
Um, firstly, I'd like to thank uh, the New South Wales Premier. I had a bit of a hiccup getting here and um, I couldn't get uh, during the COVID thing. And I thought, what would mum do? So straight away, I rang the Premier herself, tracked her down, and she gave me special permission to get back into New South Wales. Um, I, I don't want to turn this into a thank you, but there's a couple of thanks I've got to give to my sisters. They've been a rock these past two weeks. I've had a difficult time. They've had a difficult time trying to wrestle in their younger brother. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for you two for what you've done. So, to mum. Last couple of weeks, everyone's come up to me and they said, your mother was such a remarkable woman. And I had to correct them. I said, no, my mum was a remarkable person. She was just... To so many people, Lily was much more. But to us, she was just our mum. This one's for Linda, I think. Um, she treated us all the same, but probably one of us got away for a bit of murder sometimes and probably probably got treated a little bit different. But whatever she was to you, she was our mum, she was Nana, she was Lillian, and don't dare you spell it without the E on the end. She was Mare, she was Lil, and she was Mrs B. But again, she was just our mum. Mum did so much for us, and I think she was a strapper, she was a footy coach, she was a banker and a loan, she was a horse owner, grazier boss, she was a girlfriend checker and relationship counsellor, she was a peacemaker, and I apologise, she was a punisher to my sisters when they were mean to me. And quietly, she was a mum that could throw a shoe 50 metres and hit me in the back of the head. And that she had this great love for her grandchildren. So kids, all of you have a drive and a passion and you've inherited her genes, so be very proud of that. But mum had the ability to keep us in line. And, but if anyone took on one of the pups, didn't the bitch come out? I remember there was a time when I was over in WA playing footy and I got hit from behind and pretty well knocked out. I'm laying there and I could hear this, it's all on. And I thought, you know, I'm pretty happy my teammates have stepped in. But then when I come to and I look a bit closer, here's mum nailing this backman with her handbag. She jumped the fence and close and she's into him. So I think I was the only bloke in the Eshman's League that got suspended for what his mother did. Uh, I, I can go on forever about my 54 years with mum. But some of the proudest moments I've had is during my mining career, is when, any, when, when anyone was able to put two and two together and go Brady and Cobar, stories came out. Lots of dad, but so many about mum. And even, I can go on about so many people, the boss of Rio Tinto, the boss of Newmont, all Cobar people who have been here. But they said, your dogginess and your passion and your drive your mum had for Cobar was fantastic. Cobar really became everything to mum. Different to my sisters, I only knew mum and Coba. But I remember the good times. We'd be away and we'd be driving over the hill and mum would always say, we're home. Uh, mum always told me and she told the girls, Coba made you and you owe so much to Coba, and I totally agree. And Mum said that she owed so much to Coba, but there was once I disagreed with Mum, and we all know you don't often get to do that. But Coba never made Mum. I think Mum made Coba. And the one-liners. I do have to go through these, because they do bring smile to most people's heart. The barber Mum's tongue and those one-line comebacks, which I dare say... Some of the uh, government have felt before. Suck it up, princess, was a new one that she's only just coined. Get on and get over it. This one was a couple of favourites. It takes a man on a horse and not a monkey on a stick. But my favourite was she used to rattle this. Every dog has its day, but every bitch has its night. Always. Mum and I had weekly phone calls uh, and the three things always discussed. Grandkids... What's happening, Cobar? 
and what are we going to have a punt on with the horses this week? Horse racing really became Mum's passion later in life and it was a special time and didn't she love the punt? I don't know how many times, and I'll probably have to, um, how much I do owe her, from Queensland beating New South Wales from the state of origin. And I got every phone call with Mum singing simply the best, every time. Uh, Mum and I, I don't know if it's good or bad, we've had good and not so good horses across Australia. But I always remember this, uh, uh, friends and I are in a syndicate with Mum and we got second in the Magic Millions over in Perth, which is pretty special. And we're happy, man. Rocket, a mate of mine, we're all happy. But Mum on the phone call, she wants the trainer and the jockey sacked. But paid five fifty, and she put a small fortune that probably would have bought her a sports car, and she was happy. Um, this actually was something that it was uh, an amazing story. Um, I've inherited or the job we all have of mum's horses. And this is a job within itself. But to a day, only two weeks ago, she purchased a horse to the end. She bought, she's bought this filly, but this is the thing that really hits home to me. The filly's chestnut in colour, small in statue, has a huge heart, is a handful if you don't treat her right, and has a bite from hell, and she doesn't mind mixing it in the paddocks with the males and giving them a swift kick. Sort of reminds you of someone, doesn't it? Um, we sort of got the coined, we're going to call her the Kovar Mare. So put her in your black book because I know she'll probably get some divine help from above. So the last thing I've got for mum, and I promised I wouldn't shed a tear, but I think I've done a good job so far. Uh, and it's a poem, and it puts mum to a T. It's called The Last Race by Bar Barbara Ogilvy. I like to little gamble, a bet I love to place. The rush of the adrenaline, I love to watch the race. I studied all the form, sometimes picking colours or an eye on my favourite horse. For me, it wasn't gambling, it was a treasured way of life. It took my mind so far away from trouble and from strife. So now it's time for resting I've passed the winning post. Think of me with that big winning ticket and how I live my life. Rest in peace, Mum. I know you're probably giving them hell up there at the moment, but good luck. Thank you, Susan and Deidre and Pally, um, for those loving words of remembrance, those uh, cherished thoughts, and uh, for that great insight, as you say, that um, Mayor Lillian Brady is Mayor Lillian Brady. She's a wonderful woman in this town, but she's your mother and your grandmother, and that's so important, so cherished. So thanks for sharing those wonderful thoughts with us. And we do have a reflection now. Um, with Frank Sinatra singing My Way. And uh, now the end is near and so I face the final curtain My friend I'll say it clear I'll state my case Of which I'm certain I've lived A life that's full I traveled each And every highway And more much more than this, I did it my way. Regrets, I've had a few, but 
then again too few to mention I did what I had to do and saw it through without exemption I planned each charted course each careful step along the byway and more much more than this I did it my way yes there were times I'm sure you knew when I bit off more than I could chew but through it all when there was doubt I ate it up and spit it out I faced it all and I stood tall and did it much my fill my share of losing and now as tears subside I find it all so amusing to think I did all that and may I say not in a shy way I did it my way For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself Having listened to those loving words, words of memory, and uh, those images that um, just portray a wonderful lifetime of Lillian here and other places, uh, we have the scripture readings now. And uh, so could I invite uh, Nisha and Patricia and Else Elise to come to the microphone for the scripture readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. 
The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away the people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. Response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. Response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Response, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Response, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teachings that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from the heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise and those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air so that we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we've certainly heard of the wonderful, extraordinary and generous and caring and loving gift that Lillian has been here to this town of Cobar. I was listening to Zoo FM this morning and I heard Lillian speaking and she said, 
I love Cobar. I just love Cobar. And I thank everybody for supporting my wildest dreams. So it's been, a, it's been a cooperative, hasn't it? It's been a cooperation where the good people of Cobar and Lillian have worked together to make this town a better place. And for that, a long time. Lillian's been in service here in Cobar for, for 40 years, nearly 23 years, as you know, um, as, as mayor. So a wonderful impact, a wonderful tribute, and we thank her sincerely from all our hearts today. And I'd certainly like to thank her also for her friendship with me. Um, I first, Lillian came here in 1969. I first came here on the 1st of January 2007. And I was, had the joy of being part of this community for three and a half years before the bishop got out his point, um, crooked stick and grabbed me by the neck and pulled me back to Sydney. But six months ago he asked me, do you think you'd like to return? And I said, yes, I loved Cobar. I was so happy there. I don't know why I had to leave. And so six months later, um, here I am back. And I, I think that's part of the Lord's doing that, that I could be here today to share in this wonderful celebration for Lillian Brady, the mayor here for so long, who did so much good for this town. I was, able, I was here, of course, to be able to celebrate um, Dr. Brady's funeral as well and, uh, and share that very, very special occasion with the town and, uh, and with Lillian's family. And also it was a privilege on Saturday, the day before Lillian passed away, to be able to be at the hospital and spend a little bit of time there with Deidre and with Lillian. Already Lillian was not conscious at that stage but she may have known I was there and being able to receive the anointing of the sick um, so that she could be at peace and let go and just to be with the God who loves her to give her the reward of so much good that she certainly has done. So I, I certainly thank Lillian for that, that friendship that I shared with her um, during that time. And of course this morning in these scripture readings that we've heard from, um, there's consolation in each and every one of them. Firstly, from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the, sh and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. When you hear in the scriptures uh, about a mountain, it means you're closer to God. It's, it's like an epiphany. It's a metaphor for heaven. Um, we remember um, Moses going up Mount Sinai, receiving the Ten Commandments. We remember Jesus going up Mount Tabor and being transfigured, blindingly white, his divinity shining out. And when we hear of this mountain, it's, it's reminding us of, and it's a metaphor that um, heaven is like a banquet of rich food, of fine wines. And Lillian is there now um, in that wonder of God's loving presence. That day it will be said, see, this is our God in whom we hope for salvation. This is the Lord, the one in whom we hoped. We exalt and we rejoice that he has saved us. And St. Paul led to the letter to Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers and sisters, about those who have died to make sure that you do not grieve about them well, certainly we grieve about them. That's natural, we do. But as he says, that we do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We're people of faith. Lillian was baptised as a child of God. She received that gift of eternal life and she used her gifts and talents to share with you and give you a better life here in Cobar. And now she goes to receive the reward of her goodness. So that's, that's our hope, that's our faith. So we're not like people who have no hope and think it's just the end. We believe that Jesus died and rose again and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. Or as Jesus puts it in the gospel about there being many rooms in my father's house, do not let your hearts be troubled 
trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house and I'm going to prepare a place for you and then I'm going to come and take you with me. The way, the truth and the life. So we put our trust and our faith and our hope in the awareness that Lillian is now in God's loving embrace. Um, all the love and care and passion um, that she had in this life um, is now being absorbed into the wonder and the beauty of God. She sees as God sees. She is as God. She is at one with her loving Father in heaven. And that's, that's our faith, that's our hope, and that's our trust. Now, Lillian Brady was never one to let other people speak on her behalf, really, was she? She always spoke for herself. And I'd like to let Lillian speak for herself this morning. Um, in the 27th of January edition of the Cobar Weekly, um, we have her mayoral report, just a couple of weeks before she died. And this is what she had to say, and I think this is Lillian at her best. On Saturday, there was a disruption to the supply of raw water into town, and this unfortunately affected supply to the Caravan Park and Tom Knight Memorial Oval. Council staff repaired a blockage in the pipeline and supply was restored around 7 p.m. Saturday evening. How councillors, councillors found out about the water being turned off was on Friday from a very irate email from the president of the Rugby League. This happened on December 28 and it was reported to council and yet we, the councillors, were never told about it. I was told that over Christmas a contractor worked so hard to fix it yet was unable to. How can anyone go without water during December and January and yet only for the grace of God we got rain? I think it is a total disgrace and someone must take responsibility for it. I think that's Lillian speaking, isn't it? <laughs> yes. On Saturday night, Council's wonderful new engineer, Scott Casey, rang and told me that it was fixed. I certainly have an appreciation to him. Also, our appreciation goes to Council's Victor Papianek and his staff and contractor, Joe Crook and Pete Gold, for coming to our aid. We certainly have much to be grateful for. I believe local government has a new health watch system. I intend to let them come and have a look at Cobar as I believe there are many things happening that council are not aware of. They say, now here's a twist, they say a bad week always ends up a good week. I had a lovely phone call from Ray Smith, councillor's former general manager. Ray's here. Ray, I ran into Ray last night and uh, was reacquainted with him. Um, Ray was the president of Cobar Rotary in 2008 and he handed that role over to me in 2009. And so we became um, good friends. But this is the point. Ray was a good friend of Lillian. Or Ray is a good friend of Lillian. I had a lovely phone call from Ray Smith, councillor's former general manager. Ray and his beautiful wife Donna are planning a visit to Cobar soon and we plan to catch up. Wasn't to be. I would like to let the ratepayers know that I am working from home so I might be able to keep up to scratch. Lillian Brady, OMA Mayor. Now, in the Cobar Weekly, dated the 3rd of February, which is just obviously a few days before Lilia's passing, she has this to say. And you've already spoken about this, so here we go. Dear Editor, over many years the local nursing staff have held Cobar together as they work constantly without much recognition to provide the support the patients need when attending hospital. So now she's not saying something's a disgrace, she's saying something is absolutely wonderful. It was pleasing to see that this year the staff were nominated for an Australian Day Award. They were however not eligible to be judged for the award as they are not volunteers, which is part of the awards criteria. I hope the whole of Cobar knows what gems they are. 
We are so pleased that they look after us and are part of our community. I just wanted to publicly say on behalf of the whole community, to each and every one of the staff, we really appreciate what you do. So there's Lillian, not at her best, but at her very best, being positive and congratulating and supporting um, good works that happen here in Cobar because she is a person of good works and she can recognise when others are certainly doing good works. So we now say farewell to our dear Lillian. Lillian, Mayor of Cobar, mother, grandmother, that there's a, just one personal story I'd like to leave you with. Um, it happened in, uh, back in November 2008. And we were in the RSL club and there was a, a debutante ball taking place. And it was called Debs with a Difference. Um, it was a fundraiser for Tony Punsett and his family um, who were on hard times at that time and $4,860 was raised. But why it was Debs with a difference is all the footballers, the miners, um, the teachers, the builders, they all arrived dressed in beautiful gowns. They were the Debs. And the women, they all arrived wearing suits with painted on moustaches. And Lillian and I, we were the judges of who was the prettiest Deb. So that's a lovely memory I, I have of Lillian. So I'd just like to personally say um, thank you to dear Lillian for all the wonderful work you've done in this town, for the person that you are, for your, your strength of spirit, um, your life, your liveliness, um, your joy, your grit, the guts you had to do what you did, and we now ask the Lord to take you into his loving embrace. And I'd just like to finish with some words that have been sent to us from um, Bishop Columba Macbeth Green, um, the Bishop of Wilkenia Forbes Diocese. He says, I write this letter to offer my prayers upon hearing the news of the passing of Cobar's beloved mayor, Mrs Lillian Brady. I am sorry that I could not attend the funeral mass today although I ask that you pass my prayers and condolences to the family of Mrs. Brady and to the community of Cobar. The passing of Mrs. Brady is a great loss to the community of Cobar, New South Wales, and to the Diocese of Wilkenia Forbes. Her passion, care, and faithfulness to the people of Cobar is one of great inspiration, and I know her memory will live on. Be assured that I will offer Mass for the repose of her soul and for the consolation of her family and the community of Cobar. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Yours in Christ, the Most Reverend Columba Macbeth Green, Bishop of Wilkenia Forbes. Having reflected together on Lillian's life and remembered her with a great sense of admiration um, and a great sense of delight in the person she was, we're going to now pray for her with the prayers of the faithful. And I might invite Cassie, if you'd like to come to the microphone now. Lord, we ask you to grant these prayers on this day of faith and trust and hope in you as we pray for Lillian, and we make these prayers in your name. Lillian, that God will re reward her with peace and joy for the good she did during her life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of eternal life, that Lillian may be received into the Lord's loving embrace. Lord, hear our prayer. For Lillian and all who have gone before her from her family, that the Lord will forgive her and them for whatever wrong they may have done. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Lillian, 
who shared a long life with them, that God may strengthen them through their love for each other and their faith. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Koba, that the legacy of care, compassion and good works that Lillian has left with them and lived out in their lives. Lord, hear our prayer. As St. Augustine taught us, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Secure in this knowledge, we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you're following the service in the booklet um, this, this afternoon, um, we are now up to the final commendation, which is on the second or third last page. Trusting in God. We have prayed together for Lillian, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Lillian again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. I'd just like to bless Lillian's body once again with holy water. Oh, beg your pardon, beg your pardon, yes. That's why I need to keep my face in the book and follow the order. <laughs> my apologies, Peter. Um, please come forward. I hope you'll forgive me. Father, I'm pretty sure Lillian wouldn't. <laughs> and thank you in your speech for reminding me that she still can have a go at me and the council in the paper. Okay. When I was asked to speak, when I was asked to speak at Lillian's funeral by her family, I was honoured. It is a proud moment for both Cobo Shire Council and myself. However, I then realised that whilst I would get to recall some wonderful stories, I would also have to recall some of the more colourful stories that stemmed from Lillian's passion for Cobo and the community. But thinking through this, I know Lillian would have said to me, like she's already said, suck it up, princess, and get on with it. So let's start the journey. Lillian was first elected as a councillor for Cobo Shire Council in July 1976 and after 12 years she was fed up with their lack of vigour so she told them to stick it and resigned in March 1988. She then returned in September 1995, the same year she was the first elected as mayor. Lillian held the mayoral position until September 2001 and remained a councillor until September 2007. Following the local government election in 2007, Lillian was re-elected and her fellow councillors appointed her as mayor. From there, she never looked back, becoming the longest serving female mayor in New South Wales history. The words often attributed to Lillian and used by many within local government circles are passion, vigour, energy, infectious, proud. Now this was abbreviated, but I think I'll say what Lillian would have said. No bullshit. Confident, outspoken, strong, straight shooter, horse lover, and many more that I can't say in public, even though she would have. An example of her sense of humour, which did come out sometimes, in her capacity as mayor, she attended a meeting in the then Dubbo City Council and drove into the car park where, the, where a sign read, Mayor Only Parking. So she did. I am told that she explained to the Mayor of Dubbo at the time that his sign would be, was, should be more specific. <laughs> the following week a new sign was erected saying Dubbo Mayor Parking Only. <laughs> Whenever I attended a conference or state meeting with Lil, even though she was small in stature, everyone knew when she entered the room. And they would line up to greet her or more importantly, be seen to greet her. Afterwards, I had the privilege 
to receive a full rundown of everybody who did and didn't come to say hello to her. In order to give justice to the 40 years she served with Cobo Shire Council, I had to get some insight from some of the other general managers who worked alongside her or she stood over. Don Ramsland was the general manager in Cobo during the 1990s when Lillian returned to council and remembers how firmly Lillian used to control council's meetings and still did. Never hesitating to call councillors to order if they stepped out of line. So much so that on one occasion, when using her gavel to bring the meeting to order, she brought it down with such force that the head flew off the gavel and across the room. She kept the whole of the meeting. Ray Smith, who worked as a general manager with Lillian for five years, told me, right, even though he's here, that on one Monday morning after a very successful weekend that included the Cobar picnic races and a home win by the Cobar Roosters, she stormed into the council office proclaiming to all that he was the best general manager she ever worked with. However, by no fault of his own doing, later that afternoon, he was declared the worst general manager she had ever worked with. I believe that I may have heard this a few times myself over my past five years. It didn't matter what position she was in or who she was talking to. You have to say that others always knew where they stood as she was such a straight shooter. Lillian was never shy of telling people what she thought and what she wanted. One day on the way back from Sydney, she asked her Deputy Mayor Peter Abbott to stop in a town along the way to see a statue they had recently erected. Lillian was august and started to speak her mind describing the statue as ugly and awful and that she would never let something like this happen in her town. She turned to a stranger who was also looking at the statue and asked him what he thought of it. I designed it, was his reply. <laughs> now, while most people would be embarrassed, it didn't worry Lillian in the slightest as she continued to embellish her dislike even further. Lillian was renowned for her, ten for her tenacity, tenacity in pursuit of funding for the community and the local government sector. So much so that she was sought out by her peers. And for example, the mining and energy related arena to lead delegations to ministers, deputy premiers, premiers and regardless of which side they were on. In fact, she was a delegate to the Association of Mine and Mining and, related and Energy Related Councils in New South Wales, a long serving member of their executive committee and a deputy chair up until 2019. Accordingly, Lillian was awarded the life membership of the association in recognition of her efforts and dedication. When it came to awards, Lillian's character and her devotion to Cobar community led to her being presented, as we've heard the Order of Australia Medal in 2012, Local Government New South Wales Lifetime Achievement Award in 2018, and recently, very important, the inaugural Minister's Award for Women in Local Government in 2019. Thank you, Minister. On a personal level, however, Lillian was very proud of these awards. However, they meant nothing when compared with acquiring money from the state or federal government for a community. She simply refused to take no for an answer. Very early in her political career, after hearing of an elderly man who had to be transferred from the local hospital to Orange because Cobar didn't have the suitable facilities, Lillian was instrumental in securing federal funding and spearheading the fundraising efforts to open the Lillian Brady village in 1982. The original 14 bed nursing home and nine self care units has since grown to 43 bed facilities. At a conference some time ago, I was told, and this is the this relates to one of those one-liners. I was told that the, the then Minister for Roads, who shall remain nameless, in his opening remarks as guest speaker, happened to spot Lillian in the audience and commented kindly on her appearance, as was said before. The issue is, though, Lillian quickly, in a soft voice that everyone could hear, brought the house down with one of those famous one-liners. I'm here for finance, not romance, she said. Throughout the past year, during COVID, when Lillian was working from home, she 
She introduced me to two sayings that she would use frequently when she would ring me every day to keep me on my toes. She would either say, nothing is wrong, but, okay, or what do you need to tell me? I discovered very early in my time working with Lillian that somehow she always knew what was happening at council or within the community before it even reached me. So I was always prepared. Lillian was a very proud woman with a strong belief in herself. She understood the game of politics very well. She had many friends and admirers because of what she stood for, but more importantly for how she demanded respect from all levels of government, and she got it. Lillian chased politicians, and I'm sorry, with a veracity that was outside the norm and in a manner that we may never see again. She was quick-witted and had a memory of an elephant, often using that to her advantage and costing me a lot. Even though her shoes were small, but expensive and plenty of them, no one will ever fill them the same way Lillian did. She would want her beloved Cobar to remain on the map and I have no doubt she is looking down today saying so bloody proud and telling us once, ago, once again, suck it up princess and get on with it. Rest in peace Lou. Thank you Peter for those um, wonderful words from your confrere, friend, associate, uh, workmate in making Cobar what it is. Well, dear Lillian, now we come to the last farewell. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Lillian, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Lillian again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. And I will now bless Lillian's body one more time with the water, holy water. You'll find the response to these prayers in the booklet. Um, there's three responses. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul, present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend Lillian in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Lillian in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister Lillian forever. Amen. And I would like to invite you to the RSL for refreshments um, after the burial at the cemetery. And could I invite the uh, pallbearers now to come forward? Um, Pally, John Bidwell, Ken Neville, and Dr. Indra Carola Singham. In peace, let us take Lillian to her place of rest.
from glen to glen and down the mountain side the summer's gone and all the roses die just you just you But come ye back when summer's in the meadow, or when the valley's hushed and white with snow. And all the flowers are dying. If I am dead, as dead I well may be, you'll come and find the place where I. An ave there for me, and I shall hear the soft you tread upon me, and all my grave will warm the sweet. Until you come to.